Hi, Christian here. This is Chris Talks. Welcome to my podcast. Hi guys, welcome back to my podcast. This is Christian and you're tuning again to Chris Talks. And I have to say, happy first year anniversary, Chris Talks. Yes, all right. And now my guests are here right now. Please Yay. meet Ali and Janice. Go introduce yourself, guys. Hi guys, this is Ali from Small Girl Abroad and I'm happy to be here for your special episode. Yay! And I'm Janice. Um, I'm happy to be here too. Janice is part of my first few episodes of my first ever season of Chris Talks. And now she's back again. And hi everyone for tuning again to my episode. And thank you for supporting. Naka one year na po tayo ng lahat. I love you all. And to all my uh, friends from other countries who have been part of the previous episodes, thank you again. And that's it. So now, guys, uh, what are we going to do here? We have different categories, right? Yes, yes, we do. So basically, we have three different categories. The first one is love. This is a very vital um, category. We can all relate to that. And the second one is about adulting. And lastly, we have travel. So yeah, where are we going to start? All right. So Janice, you may have the option to choose each of this category and then we'll pick one question from that category so go Janice I'll be choosing the section in the middle all right that's adulting adulting all right okay. and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick these papers <laughs> yeah just random one so since Hush, this is your episode feel free to um Chris <laughs> yeah all right okay <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna pick this one, and the question is, what do you think about kids being your retirement plan? Oh, wow. Uh, well, this actually refers to the sandwich generation, and it's very, very famous here in the Philippines. So, you guys, uh, you go first, I'll add you. Yeah, hmm. So, kids being the retirement plan, I think this is a very, very popular topic, especially in the Philippines. Because as we know, we grew up, you know, um, working towards having a better life and finishing or graduating from the university or college. And then eventually, we're expected to find a good job, which I understand is the dream of every parent for us. But in the end, when they're getting older, I think there is this commonality among everyone that we are expected to maybe bring the money, I would say, bring the money to the table. And then that's, I think that's when it comes the, the issue of being the retirement plan, because eventually we are the ones that are expected to um, raise the standards or raise the, the lives of people living with us, particularly our parents. But I think there are reasons behind that. Um, it, it is what we grew up in. The culture is that, you know, uh, giving back. We like to give back to our parents. And I think that's just reasonable. But I think at some point, um, people don't really realize that sometimes it's becoming too much of a burden to the kids. And it's the same thing with, it's the same thing with that uh, statement that, our parents um, are not our emergency fund and the kids are not the retirement fund. So we have to be prepared as well. So I think this is a struggle. But we are working through that and I think it's changing now. So in this uh, period, I think many people are becoming more independent and understanding that times have changed. So yeah, that's it for me. Yes, and I think as a financial advisor and investment advisor as well, I see people or young generations looking forward to their futures. And I think one of their uh, goals in life is to achieve something for themselves and not just uh, people relying too much on them. And I think right now, a lot of young generations are investing 
to insurances, to to houses or any kind of investment because they want to to live independently and not really um the de- not really financially dependent to their parents. And I think that even though they they want to share or give back to their parents, at least they are have extra money or they have their uh, extra savings that would be then benefiting themselves as well. So I think right now, young generations are open-minded to it. So I think that for me, parents looking at their kids as a retirement plan, it's not really just a bad thing, but it's really about young generations building their own empire. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's just going to be a bad thing if your kids are not doing well enough to save a lot of money for, for them, for their future. At the end of the day, it's still part of our culture. Our parents still want to, to get something from their kids because that's the, the culture that we have. And, but the retirement plan as per se, or the word retirement plan, I think it's, it's giving us a negative vibe somehow. But, but for me, it's, like, it's okay, actually, it's okay. It's really about you as a person and your responsibilities in life. Um, can I just add to that? I think uh, the idea of saying that the kids are your retirement plan, it's just because I think this is something to do with the past. Yes. When, when um, it was the time of our grandparents, for example, they, they say that our kids are our treasure because we treasure them, yes. you know? And through time, it evolved. In the past, if you have eight kids, you are rich. Exactly. Because you're rich in love. And I think that's probably where it came from when you say that they are my retirement plan because you have a big value attached to you when you have a lot of kids. But then I think through time, the meaning of kids being the retirement plan, it just evolved because we, I mean, a lot of people went abroad and they just became this um, overseas Filipino workers. And this they just decided to, okay, I'm going to give back to my parents, going to help them with all the struggles that they had, and I'm going to return the love that they gave. So I think that was the reason why. But, you know, it it can be uh, interpreted differently by different people. For me, I cannot relate because my parents, uh, my mom, has, um, she's receiving from SSS, you know, the, the pension, and even the government provides to the senior citizen. So I don't, it, it's hard for me to think that you will put your future to your kid, which in fact, our government is giving this, they, they have these projects. They provide these projects to this um, senior citizen, not just the senior citizen, but in different in, the, in different fields. That's why we have part, party lists, right? So it's just, maybe I'm just not in that position to say on on those in this topic but i still understand that there are some parents that just taking too much they're 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 not considering the boundary they they don't feel the the hardship especially if the parents are living in the province and then the kids or let's say their their sons and daughters are working in the metro manila we know that when a person is working in metro manila they think they're earning a lot. But of course, the cost of living there is higher. So the savings, it will be hard for them to save. And the, and yet, people in the provinces expecting a lot. So I, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit too much to say that your kids are your retirement plan. Yeah. And I think right now with our generations, because we are millennials, we are in the middle of two generations. And I think that's our advantage. To be honest, that's our advantage because uh, previous generations, the generations before us, they experienced this kind of, of sandwich generation or people looking at their kids as a retirement plan. But with us as millennials, we are already on the stage wherein we are diversifying things. We are, we are investing to different things, not just to to emergency funds or saving funds, but also to like properties or anything like that or business. So something like that. I think we're in the generation that we are 
open up our doors and possibilities to different opportunities. And I think that us, if we have kids in the future, uh, those kids will never experience this kind of, of this so-called sandwich generation because I have experienced that in, with my family, that my parents, after I graduated college, they just let me live independently. They don't ask money from me. So everything that I have, I have earned for the, for the past few years, uh, it's all mine. And it's up to me how I'm going to use it for myself. And if I want to share something for my parents, and then that's my decision or my, my option. And for me, as a, as a kid, as a millennial kid, the way I give back to my parents is not about money, but it's about, about the, the time. I think that's the most important thing that we give to our parents is the time because, because they, will not, they, I mean, they will not live forever, you know? They will not stay here with us forever. We're going to move out or possibly move out of the country, just like Ali, who is now uh, living in Slovakia. So I think that us millennials, we are, in the, we are really a, in the generation we're in. It's very a good generation because we have experienced both generations. Of, mm-hmm. So I think we're just so lucky with that. And now I guess the, the Gen Zs are experiencing the a good life because yeah. I, I noticed that there are no more sandwich generation nowadays there's a few few families i guess but mostly kids right now they're really living independently after graduation after college graduation mm-hmm. so that's it and, and don't like i mean yeah we're in the we're the millennials and we have we still have this thought that we want to give back to our parents we don't we, it's not that we don't want to give anything to our parents. We we still appreciate those hardships, those sacrifices they gave just for us to, you know, graduate and have this degree and have this good life, which I think it's fair, you know, just at least appreciate and honor them in any way that we can, yes. but not in a way that it 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 it's hard for us to... You know, maintain our own life. I think we just need to remove the the stigma regarding retirement plan as our our kids being the retirement plan. Because people think that when it comes to sandwich generation, it's all about money, but in reality, it's not just about money. You can give back to your parents by just showing love and time. I think that's the most important. But Money, I think that's the old custom or the old tradition of the Filipinos that we need to remove. Because mm-hmm. honestly, putting your kids as a retirement plan, it's not a bad thing. It's just that the, the, the people giving different definition to the, 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 the term. Mm-hmm. I think, um, so I'm sure that you know about this um, guy on Facebook or maybe the website. It's called The Woke Salary Man. Mm-hmm. And they they mentioned on their blog that if you treat your children like investments, don't be surprised when they view you as a liability. So mm-hmm. I think uh, some of the parents that we are, that we still communicate with, you know, I mean, our classmates' parents, for example, you know, same age bracket, they they say that I'm gonna have more kids, so I'm gonna have someone to take care of me in the future. I'm not sure if that's a reality or if that's the truth or if that's just something that they got used to saying because it's a, it comes out as a joke when you talk with your friends, like a small talk. But I don't think that personally they mean that, but it's just what they're used to. And, you know, as we say, it's better to uh, give our children the feeling of freedom. And that they can uh, willingly say that, oh, my parents have been so kind to me and that she or he took care of me and I would like to give back. But not to the point that, oh, my, my parents asked me to give this because I owe them my life. Yeah. You know, I think some, some surprisingly, I know some people who are still struggling with this concept, but I don't think that it's uh, culturally... Um, 
uh, dependent. I think it's also about the personality and what that person has experienced in the past. But honestly, my takeaway with this is, is that, you know, if you want to have <laughs> a retirement plan, then there are other financial ways to work through that and invest on something else. Probably invest in the time that you spend with your kids, invest with the education, but that in the end is for them, not for you as a parent. Mm-hmm. And and you have the control. It's your money. Yeah. Yes. So you have the control over that. So if mm-hmm. it's your choice if let's say twenty percent you will give back to your parents and then maybe thirty percent for your own savings and the rest of the the percentage, let's say fifty for all your expenses. So you, you cannot I don't know, it's okay to secret this place from your parents just for your own future. But as I said, it's your money. You have the control over it. Yes. I think uh, my takeaway from this you know, question is that I guess I'm just so lucky with my with 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 my parents or with my family because uh, they never really asked for money since we graduated from college. I guess I was the one who was asking for money before, but <laughs> yeah, they they were my emergency funds before. <laughs> But I guess, you know, right now I'm living independently. And I think that I've learned a lot from that, from that experiences that I had for the past few years. And I think that, yeah, you're right. You know, when it comes to retirement plan, there are so many ways for that. And, and I think that it's really about your choice. It's really about your choice if you want to give back to your parents financially or just or just in different, ways, in different right? way, you know. Some some kids right now they put their 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 parents as their dependents in their insurance plan. I think that's already a part of giving back to your parents. At least that they're also insured uh, financially, and um, I think that yeah, with HMOs like the health card, something like that. So there are so many ways. It's not just about giving money to them. Sometimes just uh, provide them the love and the support. And I think that's the, the, the best way that you can give to your parents. And for the parents, what they can give to their kids after they graduated or have or finally earning something, I think that the best way that they can they they could give to their kids is the, the same love that they've uh, providing ever since and since day one, you know. Mm-hmm. And also for, for the parents, I think that it's about it's about time that you enjoy life as well and 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 learn to invest as well you know if you're if you see your kids investing i think you should do the same thing you know as a family you should work together and not to to bring i mean you you lift up each other yes. i remember this artist i will not say the name mm-hmm. but this artist that so he had a daughter so his wife got pregnant and then had a daughter. And then he told the, uh, I don't know, in his vlog, he, he, like he fast forward and he imagined that what will happen if my daughter will get married? What will I do in my life? So it, technically, parents sometimes just put their whole life to their kids that they forgot that what if their parents get married? What will they do? So... You see, it's important to have a retirement plan. At some point, you will enjoy your life when you get home. At least you have that money. You will not go after your kids and to ask for repay. You know, you pay all the stuff. Begging, begging yeah. for money. So I, I think that that's that's some, some, something like you need to consider. Even your your kids are just still babies. You have to consider that. Yeah, I think that I think that's one thing. You know, parents should really look, really look forward, look up with a uh, look up to their future, not really depend the ball to their kids. I think that's one thing that we need to change. So us as a millennial in the future will be parents as well. I think Ali is Ali is a parent already. You're a mom, so I think that I put this question to you, Ali, as a mother. So. Do you consider your kid as a retirement plan, or do you, you know, uh, do you do do things for the future, or 
what are the things that you do or plan ahead for the future? Um, I don't, I don't uh, think about that at all, actually. Because I, I only think about this concept when I see it on social media. And luckily, my parents are not really asking a lot from me. And they just want me to live my life as I should. But personally, when I know that I'm going to have a kid, because our baby is very much planned. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, I need to prepare this much and this much. But then I remember because of the benefit that I'm getting from the Slovak government, I didn't have to worry much about that. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that I shouldn't prepare for my, you know, for my kids. So I started, I started investing um, slowly before she came out, and now she's only a year and four months. I, I already had some savings that I prepared for her, and even the the bank teller was telling me, "Oh, this is good." Like, yes, that's exactly the plan. So I think I'm ready for that slowly. I'm not perfectly ready, still too soon to, to prepare because there's still a life ahead of her. But I have started already. So I'm thinking that even though she will have her own life and her own decisions, she would still need me or us at some point. So it would be better if I have something ready to give her. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. All right, thank you guys. I think we, I think this, this issue, this, this is a long issue. This is a long debate, because um, people have different takeaways from this kind of issue when it comes to sandwich generations. And as a millennial or different generations, they have their different takeaways or perspective of this kind of sandwich generation. And I think uh, it's really, it's really about case to case basis, and. I think luckily our families are really good, you know, but how about the other people? I know that they still have this sandwich generation just to live up. And I think that's uh, one thing that we, we want to, to educate the people, the families. When it comes to financial planning, they need to have a family planning as well. And I think it's a good thing, as you said, Ali, that you're starting to make a plan for your family, not just... For yourself, but for for Ellie, you know, it's a good thing. So I think it's a really a long debate. But thank you, Ali and Janice, for, for for being part of this podcast. And do you have anything to say? Uh yeah. Well, thank you for having me and Janice, of course. Um, and if you have time, also I would like to invite you to my podcast. It's Small Girl Abroad. It's about people living abroad and their experiences. Yes, yes. And of course, of course, Janice, thank you again and stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye.